in my most recent video Jada and I did a tea party mukbang and I promised you guys that I was going to show you how we made all that food. So let's start first of all by making the lemon pies. Alright guys, so I totally stole this recipe from Eugenie Kitchen. Welcome to the Bear Pantry Show. If you're looking for authentic Belizean recipes, then you're in the right place. My name is Barbara and this is Cooking Made Simple. I love her little logo, her little opening. I haven't gone to watch Eugenie's Kitchen in a while, but this I know I stole from her. Short crust pastry dough, blue ribbon, it says, all right? So the ingredients are a cup and a half, let me make sure this is right, of cake flour. Doesn't say if it's supposed to be sifted, so just let's go. Cake flour, seven tablespoons of butter. Now the butter has to be cold because you have to cut it into the thingy. So for seven tablespoons, this is, I cut this right here, see, take a look. I cut off a stick and it says that eight tablespoons is a stick, six tablespoons is like three fourths of the stick. So we're gonna eyeball it to get seven tablespoons, okay? Come on, Josh. Let's eyeball this. So I'm gonna say that looks like a tablespoon. Get rid of that. And the rest is gonna be seven because the whole stick was eight tablespoons, all right? Remember that. I gotta cut fast before it melts because it's a hot day. I'm so excited for our tea party. You guys would have seen the video already. I wanted to put up this video first, the video on the making of the stuff and then put up the mukbang second, but I think I like to put up my mukbangs first to tantalize you guys so you can come back and watch the making of the recipe. So I already made the cookies. The assortment of cookies that you saw in the mukbang, I already made those. That's going to be a video that you guys are going to see tomorrow, okay? I split it up into three videos. Throw that in there. We're just cutting it into small little cubes. You know, some people will grate it. I just remember that. Some people will use a cheese grater and grate it, but I'm already down this road here, so let's just continue here. So that's the butter. We need an egg. I'm going to crack that in a little while. A tablespoon of water. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do a pinch of salt first. Let me wash my hands. A pinch of salt. And the thing does say pinch, okay? I got the stuff at Walmart a long time ago. All right. A quarter teaspoon of vanilla, vanilla extract. I think that's the way you say that in Spanish, right? Vanilla. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you should be throwing it all in, you know. It says put the cake the salt, the caster sugar. Oh, caster sugar. Let me show you my caster sugar. This was regular old sugar. See right here? Regular old sugar, and I just put it in the blender for like a quick whiz. One teaspoon, and now it becomes caster sugar. Voila, magic. Put the sugar, cut the butter in, and then add the egg lightly beaten, and then the water, then the vanilla. Ooh, I add the vanilla too quickly. Let me get this out of the way. Let me grab a lemon, okay? Okay, gotta make sure that's clean. We're gonna put it in this tart thing here, okay? Or tartlet thing. So, I already cracked the egg. I got my lemon, the water. So flour, butter, egg, water, extract, salt, caster sugar, and lemon juice. Okay, so let me cut the butter in. I just put the um, vanilla in a little bit too quickly. You can use both hands if you want to. I think if it was grated, it would cut in a little bit faster. Take your time and just, all you're doing to cut the butter in is pinching it into the flour, okay? Pinch it. Okay, I think it's pinched in. You see any butter? Guys, I'm waiting for you to answer. Do you see any butter? All right, and I have a good uh, pie dough recipe that I use for other pies too, but for the lemon pie, I like this one. The water, the one egg, and they tell you it has to be a medium egg, don't you know? I was like, this is a big Costco egg, okay? <laughs> and then for the lemon, this is what we're going to do. Just cut it here. Well, cut it a little bit better than that. Oh, this is dry. Because we literally need two drops. Are we going to get two drops? One, two. 
It's more than two. <laughs> that's all that's needed. I like this one for lemon pie because of the two drops of lemon that's in it. No, I like the, um, the it's, it's almost like a shortbread, this pie dough. I'm sure you should use a pie cutting thing and I have one, but oh, that's what that thing is. I pulled out that thing the other day thinking I could cut up a salad with it because I saw my favorite YouTuber cutting up a salad with something that looked like that. It's a pie dough cutting thing, <laughs> this tool that I have. I am so silly. And remember, we're using cake flour because it's lighter. Now, this will give you one bottom or one top, but we want to do those 12 little tartlets. So what I'm going to do is try to cut this into 12 pieces, all right? So, and we don't need, do we frisee this one? Need to use for pastry making shortbreads, lemon pies. Yeah, see? Shortbreads, lemon pies. I know for pie dough, you do this. You frise or fraser. I don't know if I'm saying that word right. Fresh. Is fraser? Fresh. Fresh? Fresh. He doesn't know. Okay, fresh. He doesn't know. Okay, let me wash my hands. Get the stickiness off of it because I need to cut this into 12 equal pieces, okay? I'll be right back, guys. Okay, guys. I don't know what the easiest way is to cut this into 12. If it were 8 or 16, I could do it like fractions. So I'm going to make a log cut the log in two. How many pieces do I need? Twelve. That's one, two, so that's four already. Six, eight, ten, twelve. Some of them are smaller than the other one, but we'll figure that out in a second. Three, three, thirty-seven. Three, three hundred and thirty-seven grams. We're going to divide that by 12 to, to know how many grams each piece must be. So it's a little bit over 28 grams that I'm supposed to make the pieces. And I'm trying to get as close as I can because I want to make sure that all 12 pieces are equal. So I'm just rolling them into balls and then flattening them. And then put them on this parchment line baking sheet. And then into the fridge they go for about a half hour. My tray is sprayed with some vegetable oil and I'm just going to go ahead and roll out the first one, stick it in the little slot here for my pie pan. Let me get another one here. So it takes a little bit of time guys. Now I am not digging into my pan okay with this knife, I'm kind of scoring just to get the excess dough off and then just shape it with my fingers and then prick it with a fork because I'm not going to blind bake these because they're so tiny they should be fine so they, they won't poof up when I bake them right into the oven they go for about 20 to 30 minutes I'm going to set the timer for 20 minutes and come back and check on them now let's take care of the cheesecake, the mini cheesecakes. They didn't have any of the graham cracker crust at the store, at least not the mini ones. So Jada got the crumbs. I have two cups of crumbs, half cup of room temperature butter, and two tablespoons of sugar. And if you need more butter, go ahead and do that, all right? Now let's take care of the filling for the cheesecake. One can of sweetened condensed milk one 8 ounce package of cream cheese and not the low fat stuff okay the regular stuff one third cup of lemon juice and then just mix this until it is smooth Jada pressed the crumbs into the pan for me she sprayed the pan first and now all I'm gonna do is put dollops of the filling into the crust be generous okay because we have enough And then the remainder I'm going to put in this pan. It's not going to be a very thick or tall cake, but you know what? It's not going to go to waste. Stick all this in the fridge for overnight. Now these I'm going to take care of in the morning. This is for the lemon pie. Okay guys, so I've separated two eggs because we're going to put the yolk in a bowl with half a can 
of this condensed milk because I'm not going to do a whole can because I feel like I'm going to have too much filling left over. About that. Okay, so let me get the lemon, the lemon juice. Put it through a strainer. I'm going to start with a quarter of a cup. And we don't need the hand mixer for this. A whisk will be fine. And I had some leftover yolks from the cookies that I did, which is a part of the mukbang. So I'm just going to use one of the yolks just so it won't go to waste. You don't have to do that though, okay? The two yolks will be fine. I put another quarter cup of the lemon juice because it wasn't tart enough. And now I'm just whisking the egg whites. Let me add some sugar. Beat it to stiff peaks. All right, guys. So I whip this to stiff peaks. Just a little bit of sugar in there. And because these are more done than not, I'm going to put them back in here. As a little protection during the baking I'm not gonna bake them just in a tray so this one I put on the underside and turn the tray upside down to bake so that's why you see the beauty of the tart pan on the inside and then these ones I bake them on the inside of the tart pan and so you see the beauty on the outside and remember I just pricked holes so I didn't have to do that blind bake thing so what I'm going to do now is put, see my thing thickened up, put some of the custard in here. This one's kind of lopsided because of the way it was baked on the outside. Custard. That's why I didn't want to do the full recipe because I feel like I'm going to have too much filling. And a dozen of these little cheesecake, uh, not cheesecake, lemon pies are enough. This is a recipe that I got from St. Catherine's when I went to Catherine's in Belize. Um, remember you don't have to put the extra egg yolks. I just kind of used one and a half more egg yolks because I don't want egg yolks to go to waste. I could have made lemon bars or something from those, but we already have too much food for this tea party. Let me go ahead and put the meringue on top. Now when these are brown, that's how you know the pies are ready in the baking okay so into the oven they go at 350 and then look yeah in no time at all they're gorgeous jada's pitching in and helping me with the meatballs so this is some cocktail sauce and some grape jelly and it's part for part okay put it in a little pan now if you're going to do this overnight you don't need to heat it up on the stove first but because we want this for the tea party today we're just going to go ahead and heat it up on the stove. So let me grab the meatballs. And this is Costco brand. It's already cooked. Let's see if it has MSG, guys. Yup, natural flavors is MSG. The cocktail sauce has MSG too, so you know what? I can only eat one meatball. I'm going to put 25 in here. Ooh, I caught Jada putting some cayenne. Jada knows how to flavor stuff behind my back. <laughs> so pour the whole thing on top of the frozen meatballs. I got this little um, slow cooker from a friend. She won it from the casino. She gambles so much, you know, they give away free gifts every month. She got it there. Let's put it on high. Now let's take care of the chicken nuggets. These are some boneless, skinless thighs. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut up uh, maybe one and a half of the thighs into small bite-sized pieces. Stick it in this bowl. And then wash it off with some distilled white vinegar and water. You guys know how we do it. We're Belizean. You guys are family now. You should be doing that by now. <laughs> add salt, black pepper, and I'm going to add some cayenne, like what Jada just did with the meatballs. Get it worked in. And now let's set this aside to take care of the batter. So I have some all-purpose flour, some cornstarch, baking powder, and of course I'm going to leave the ingredients in the description, okay? This is some club soda. You can use water if you don't have the club soda, but I like 
the club soda better. I feel like it gives it a better batter. We'll try to say that fast, a better batter. So just add a little bit in at a time. I'd say between half a cup and a cup. Okay, let me get this off of my whisk and go ahead and add some vegetable oil before I add more of the club soda because I don't want it to get too thin. So see how it's supposed to look? Like this, like pancake. Let me get my oil going and then dump the first batch of the chicken into the batter. Work it in like this. And now that my oil is ready, put a few pieces in. Kind of drain it off first, okay, so that it won't spatter in the oil. Okay. And always put them in clockwise so you can know which ones went in first. And then when they become light brown, remove them and drain them in a colander. And then continue the process, okay? Frying the rest of them first to light brown. And then when all the pieces are fried, go ahead and return the pieces to the pan and fry them until they're golden brown. Now let's take care of the sweet and sour sauce. This is about three ounces of tomato paste, some brown sugar, strawberry jam. Again, I'm gonna have the ingredients listed below, okay? So check for it. Some distilled white vinegar and some water. Very simple. Oh, let me get some salt. A teaspoon of salt. And before I start whisking, let me go ahead and check on my chicken that's frying behind me. Making sure that they don't burn. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and whisk my sauce. Just to make sure everything is incorporated. And then I'm going to pour it into the saucepan and put it on low heat. Now Jada's helping out again by taking care of the boiled eggs so that we can make egg salad sandwich. And to boil the eggs, I just removed the eggs from the fridge to make them room temperature. I boiled my water, I put some salt in the water, dropped the eggs in and let it go for 12 minutes. And then I dropped them into a bowl of ice water to shock them. That way they can be peeled very easily and now Jada's squishing them. So let's see what she's going to put in this salad. Ooh, onion. I never thought of that. Mayo. Some mustard. Salt. Black pepper. And cayenne again. Ooh, this little girl loves cayenne. Okay, so she's just stirring up the mayo and the mustard together. And now into the eggs they go. This should be good, guys. Now it's time to just mix it all up together. Okay. Looking pretty good. Now she's going to go ahead and take care of the spam. No Belizean tea party is worth anything if we don't have Spam sandwiches. So she grated half a tin of Spam and she's chopping up some onion. Now in her dish she's putting some mayo, some mustard. She's putting more mustard in this one than she did with the egg salad if you notice. And then what next guys? Some sugar. Ooh, I see you Jada. She's trying to get it to taste like high in salad dressing. We ran out of the last batch that she brought back from England and we didn't order any from Amazon. So she's going to make it work. Now, normally Belizeans put a lot of pepper in the Spam sandwich, but Jada's opting not to do that because she has pepper in everything else and I want to enjoy. 
So she cut the crusts off of the bread. Normally I don't mind sandwiches with crust on them, but because it's a tea party, we want it to look fancy. So for the first one, she's going to put the egg salad and just kind of spread it evenly on the one slice of bread. And then for the second one, she's going to do the Spam. And if you've never tried Spam Sandwich, try it guys. It is so delicious. Now let's see what she does for the last one. She's doing Spam. And egg salad. You know I ate all this at the mukbang and I didn't know this was happening, right? Let's put the tops on and she's going to get to slicing. So this one is diagonal. This one's diagonal too. And then she's doing it this way so she can identify the one that has the two meats. <laughs> Now take a look guys, take a look at all the stuff that we have on the mukbang table. So Jada put some jam on the cheesecakes, look at the sandwiches, the chicken with the dip, the meatballs. Be sure to go back and check out the video before this one because that was an amazing mukbang. Mmm, mmm, oh my god, it tastes like when I was 16. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're seeing me on Facebook, don't forget to follow, like, and share the page. If you're seeing me on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the page. And if you want to see me on a different platform, come and join the membership at Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash Bear Pantry Show.